A rift appears to be growing between the multiple House committees that are tasked with investigating the Benghazi attacks. House Armed Services Chair Buck McKeon is questioning the reliability of a witness who testified at that oversight committee hearing earlier this week, defending his own committee's attempts to get to the bottom of the deadly attacks. General Robert Lavelle has said that the U.S. military could and should have done more to help the American killed at the consulate. But McKeon says General Robert Lavelle isn't privy to all the information that was available to those in the chain of command on the night of September 11, 2012. Congressman Trent Franks, who is also on the Armed Services Committee, is joining us now. Thank you, Congressman, for joining us today. Let's talk for a moment about uh, McKeon's comments. What do you make of uh, his remarks about the committee, and how effective do you think this new House Select Committee will be in the long term? Well, I think it's important to keep in mind that Chairman McKeon and Chairman Issa have two very different jobs. Uh, Chairman McKeon, I don't think, was questioning General Lavelle's uh, credibility or uh, his veracity. He simply was wondering if he was in a position to have all of the information. On the other hand, I think that uh, General Lavelle kind of represents a general consensus within some of the military ranks, especially in this particular case, that this administration, uh, through the civilian command structure, ignores reality to the extent sometimes it puts the military in a very, uh, un, uh, very bewildering position. And I think that's what's happened here. The real scandal in this entire situation is that, number one, the personnel on the, on the ground there at Benghazi begged this administration for additional security support, and they were ignored or refused. And secondarily, the, uh, the President of the United States and this administration blatantly lied to the American people about the genesis and whether or not this was a terrorist attack. They knew within 24 hours that it was a terrorist attack, and they simply misled, in, in the most fundamental way, the American people, and it seemed to be predicated on their concern for their political interests. And I think that's the, the great scandal here, is that this administration is willing to set aside the truth for the sake of its political uh, viability, and that's a that's a tragedy. That is the oppo opposite of statesmanship. You know, when you talk about the security concerns, uh, there are many people who wonder why, in anticipation of the 9/11 anniversary, that why you wouldn't beef up security at American interests overseas, particularly at a time and a region where terrorists are definitely out there, uh, ready to strike at U.S. interests. Well, that is really the, the great question that should be, be asked by all of the media. Uh, the fact is there's no culpability in our, in our military command structure here. They were ready, willing, and capable to defend uh, the Benghazi uh, compound there, and they would have been able to do so had they been able to have the cooperation from the civilian command structure. And that's the, the, the tragedy here. They, they talk about whether the response came in time. Well, the, the fact is the response should have come days and weeks before the attack occurred because this is when our people had begged so desperately for help and I, I just can't express to you and I sit on the Armed Services Committee have for 12 years and it's, it's, it's very bewildering to me that this administration seems to set aside our national security and, uh, and even uh, the protection of American lives for the sake of political expediency. It is a frustration that beggars my ability to articulate on television. Uh, this week we learned uh, from an interview that uh, anchorman Brett Baer conducted uh, that the president was not in the, situa in the situation room there at the White House when the attacks were happening at that moment, uh, when that uh, security advisor was there uh, at, that moment, at that time, at least in his presence. Uh, what do you make of that? Does that concern you that the president wasn't right on the scene in the hours after the attack? Well, it does, and it even goes beyond that. I think on the 6th of September, the president was going on the television and berating uh, Mr. Romney for his uh, dangerous uh, or, or uh, lack of foreign policy uh, uh, capability. And then the following day he was campaigning, the following day he was campaigning, the following day he was campaigning, and on the day of the event he was not uh, in the, in the uh, situation room there. And then, of course, the next day he was. Uh, but yes, that concerns me greatly because the administration tries to put forth uh, this notion that they're on top of everything. And I will tell you, uh, if there's anything that's out of balance in Washington, D.C., it is the competency ratio compared to the, to the breathtaking arrogance ratio of this administration. They pretend to be on top of things, but they seem to be completely out of touch with reality. 
Congressman uh, Franks, thank you so much for joining us. We are out of time, but it's always good to check in with you. I appreciate it. Thank you, Uma.